Nice is for nerds. I'm rich, and rich is how I intend to stay. My boss isn't gonna like that. Your boss? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me see that for a moment, will you? Hi. Just a minute. You're not trying to mug me, are you? I'm warning you. I've had self-defense. Don't be absurd. Just give me this, will you? Ah! <laughs> Soup's on. Go on, eat up, eat up. You know, you shouldn't pick out all the peanuts first. That's all I could find today. That's it. Eat up. Where's Blanche today, Beatrice? Okay, go on, you find her. Charlie. Look at this guy. Just look at him. It's Melvin Rich. He says the reason there's so many homeless people in town is the soup kitchens. Don't feed them and they'll go away. And then he gets the city council to vote cutbacks. Huh? Yeah, I know. Somebody ought to tell him. Hey, Jonathan. What? I mean, look at that poor guy. Boy, I mean, he is gone. I mean, really gone. I mean, he's out there. <laughs> he slipped off the scope. You know, lost contact with Houston Control. <laughs> he's just sitting there talking to himself like... I was uh, uh, talking to a friend. Here a second ago. Jonathan, I really wish you wouldn't do that. 
Oh, don't tell me that bum's our next assignment. That's right. He hasn't got much longer to live, Mark. It's 24 hours. We're here to grant him a wish. And listen to this, Charlie. He says he wants to close the park and pave it over to make more parking space for the business district. Boy, I would really like to tell that guy a thing or two. What would you want to tell him? What? Who, me? Yeah. I couldn't help but overhear what you were saying to your friend there. My friend? You mean Charlie? Mm-hmm. Now, my name's Jonathan. This is my friend Mark. How you doing there, Charlie? Who's he talking to? Well, to your friend, Charlie. You, you see Charlie? Well, yeah, sure I see him. <laughs> Don't you? No. You better get your friend some help, you know? Oh, well, he's had a bad day. Olives do that to him. Olives? Huh? What? That's pretty weird. <laughs> My name's Willie. Willie the Waver. That's what everybody calls me anyway. No, wait, wait just a minute now. You mean you don't see him? Of course not. He's not there. But I, I don't mind if you see him. You were the one that was talking to him. Well, of course I was, because he's the only person I got to talk to. He's my friend, but you, you've got Jonathan there. He's your friend. You see, that's why I was kind of surprised when you were talking to Charlie. What's that? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie said he, he's a little bit surprised, too. <laughs> but he doesn't mind if you talk to him. That's fine with him. It's, it's, Charlie's a very easygoing kind of a guy. He's used to all kinds. Uh, you were saying you wanted to tell something to that guy in the paper. Oh, uh, Melvin Rich. Yeah, I sure would. What do you want to tell him? Uh, I tell him... Uh, I tell him... I tell him... Be nice. That about says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's awful pretty for this time of year, isn't it? You see this tree right here? In about another six months, it gets covered in the most beautiful blossoms, white. I guess I won't be around to see that. That's too bad. I'd like to see them come fluttering down just one more time. Well, lunchtime is over. Time to get back to my waving. See you later, fellas. Yeah, see you later. See, Charlie says it was nice meeting you. And if you ever want to talk, just look him up. He's a lot cheaper than that shrinker. And, and he says, you better lay off those olives. Melvin Rich. Take a look at this. Man's president of Tricor Industries, and the richest man to ever run for mayor. Should be easy enough. What's that? Willie's wish. All we gotta do is get this Melvin Rich to come down to the park so Willie can say, be nice. <laughs> Jonathan, you are absolutely crazy if you think this rich guy is gonna come down here to the park and talk to some flipped out moon man who sits around talking to invisible people. <laughs> I mean, this guy is a lunatic. He's talking to himself and, uh, uh... I was, uh, uh, talking to a friend. It was, uh, <clears throat> he was here a second ago. <laughs> I better go. Is this a library? Would you keep your voice down, please? This is an office, not a bowling alley. Oh, we're sorry. Uh, we'd like to see Mr. Rich. Would you? Yeah. My name is Smith. Jonathan Smith. I'm an angel. I usually don't tell people that, but I figured I'd get right to the point, save us some time. Well, I appreciate your candor. And pray tell, who are you, Tinkerbell? 
I'm Mark Gordon. I'm with him. I see. Well, if you'll just wait over there, someone will be right with you. Thanks very much. Jonathan. Hmm? What you tell that guy you were an angel for? I guess that's what I am. And nobody's gonna think you're nuts. Well, of course he does. He's calling security right now to get us thrown out. Oh, all right, guys. We're leaving peaceably. They can't see us or hear us. Where are they? Well, they were right there. Well, check the elevator. Let's go. Hey, this is really neat. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's go. Who are you two? What are you doing in here? You can see us. Of course he can. How are we going to talk to him if he can't see us or hear us? Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Fisk, call security. Uh, I've got two lunatics in my office. <laughs> You're wasting your time, Mr. Riss. They won't be able to see us. Throw them out. Yes, sir. Take them out, fellas. Hey! Hey, you can see me! That's right, Tinkerbell. What about the other one? Throw him out as well. What other one? This one right here, you cretin. Oh, they can't see me. Don't be absurd. Of course they can. Who can? You can. Can what, sir? They can't hear me either. They can't? Who can't? You can't. Can't what, sir? They think you're crazy. They do? Who do? You do. Do what, sir? Think I'm... Crazy. Wouldn't do to have them think you're crazy. You're running for mayor. Tell him let go of my friend. Let go of his friend? Whose friend? Just let him go and get out of here. Yes, sir. Okay, fellas. Let's go. I'm having a nervous breakdown. That's what it is. No, that isn't what it is. You see, Mr. Rich, I am an angel. You're uh, both angels. Oh, no, he's the angel. I'm an ex-cop. I see. Fisk, have my driver bring the car around, please. I'm not feeling well and cancel all my appointments. It's all right, Melvin. We're just having a slight breakdown. Nothing major, nothing we can handle. Just go home and lie down for a while. Oh, Mr. Rich, I'm afraid I can't let you go home. Not until you promise to come to the park with us. Oh, really? Yes, really. <laughs> I'll let you get out of that chair until you promise to come with us. All right. I'll go. I'll go. Good. You can get up now. I can? Yes, you can. Ready to go? Somebody I'd like you to meet. Mr. Rich, this is Willie the Waver. Willie, this is the Mr. Rich from the newspaper. Yeah, so it is. Well, go on. You wanted to tell him something. Yes, and I'd appreciate it if you'd be quick about it. Uh, uh, Mr. Rich, be nice. Be nice? Yeah, that's the whole ball of wax. That's the message. Well, yeah, but uh, think about it. I mean, you're not very nice. You've got no compassion for people. You want to take away what little they've got. You want to close the shelters, the soup kitchens. You want to pave over the parks, put in oil wells instead of beaches. Now, wait a minute. I worked very hard for what I've got by the honest sweat of my brow. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Rich, but your bank is very dishonest in its dealings. 
your, your companies make shoddy products, you don't care about the safety of your employees. I mean, the list goes on and on, but it all boils down to one thing. You're just not nice. Yes, uh, what do you intend to do about that? Me, nothing. Then I'm just giving you a chance. The choice is up to you. That's it? That's it. Well, if it's up to me to make the choice, I think the choice has already been made. Nice is for nerds. I'm rich, and rich is how I intend to stay. My boss isn't gonna like that. Your boss? Oh, yeah, please. Well, let's let him do something about it if he so chooses. In the meantime, I will wish you good day. I'm fine. Why did you call me Willie? Not your name, isn't it? No, you cretin. I am J. Melvin Rich. Well, you, you sound like Rich. You look like... Like what? Willie the Waver. What am I doing in these filthy clothes? Let me see that for a moment, will you? All right, just a minute. You're not trying to mug me, are you? I'm warning you. I've had self-defense training. Don't be absurd. Just give me this, will you? Help! Police! Help! I've been mugged! Are you all right? Oh, my Lord in heaven. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good guess. There he is! That's the one. That's the one who tried to mug me. Lady, are you sure? This is Willie the Waver. I've known this guy for years. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Now, what's this all about, old-timer? This Amazon attacked me. Well, he tried to steal my comp. I simply asked to see myself. I'm sure it was just a misunderstanding, man. I can clear all this up, officer. I am J. Melvin Rich. I have sufficient identification to... He stole my wallet. My credit cards. <laughs> Sure, Willie, sure. I told you, lady, he's really harmless. Well, harmless or not, they ought to keep these people off the street. That's exactly what I have been saying in my campaign. This lovely young woman is exactly right. And if you will vote for me, madam, I can assure you. All right. All right, I won't press charges. He's <laughs> nutty as a fruitcake. Could I have my compact, please? Thank you, ma'am. He really means no harm. Oh, God. Now, Willie, I don't know what's got into you here, but... I am J. Melvin Rich. Look, this man knows me. Ask him. Now, look, Willie. No more shenanigans, or I'll have to run you in. Is that clear? Uh, uh, yes, yes, it, it's very clear, very good. Come on, Willie, let's go uh, feed the pigeons, huh? But I am Melvin Rich. Oh, Mr. Rich. You ever heard that old saying, you never judge a man until you walk a mile in his moccasins? I don't wear moccasins. I wear wingtips. Not anymore. Now, you said if the boss was going to intervene, he ought to do it. Well, I think he has. And I figure what he's got in mind for you is to keep walking. <laughs> I don't think I can pull this thing off. How not even with an angel to help Willie, me. there's nothing to pull off. I mean, this is just a chance for Mr. Rich to see what it's like to be Willie the Waver for a while. And a chance for you to see what it's like being Mr. Rich. Except for one difference. What's that? That you can be nice without having to change. Oh. 
hold it, old man. There's no pandering in here. Don't be a fool. I am J. Melvin Rich. Oh, yeah? And I'm Johnny Carson. I'm just doing this in the daytime for pocket money. Very funny. Now, well, look, I'm trying to be nice, so why don't you just move on? Okay. And don't come back! What a place. You should have let me open the door for you, sir. How come? Wasn't locked or anything. <laughs> I may be old, but I ain't feeble. No, sir, indeed not. You know, young fella, I can't believe you've been in this job all this time. You never got a raise. Well, sir, you've never seen fit. Well, I seem pretty fit now, don't I? What do you think, Jonathan? My name is Jameson, sir, and it's OK. Yeah, I forgot. Well, what about that race? I'd appreciate it very much, sir. Well, he did steal a case of motor oil from Mr. Rich last month and some spare parts he sold to a friend. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, son. That's not very nice. Do what, sir? Stealing the motor oil, those spare parts. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Rich. Uh, he only did it because Mr. Rich docked him a week's pay for getting a dent in the car. Oh, yeah, well, that's different. You believe me, then? No, I don't. Angels don't lie. Well, I'm no angel, but I didn't. How much did you get for them spare parts and things? Mr. Rich, I swear I didn't take anything. $230. $230? That's a lot of money. You found out. Look, I know I did no, wrong, no, but well, I... Yeah, yeah, well, what are we going to do about it? Well... Obviously, you're going to fire me, but please don't press charges. I've got a wife and a child. I needed the money for the rent, and I... All right, you got the raise. What, sir? Yeah, you got the raise, uh, but you got to pay me back out of that because I, I can't let you be stealing. No, sir. I'm really sorry I did I'm, it, sir. I know. No telling what a man will do when he's desperate. People shouldn't have to be in that kind of situation. It ain't right. No, it ain't. It isn't. I don't know how to thank you, sir. Well, just don't lie or steal anymore, son. It isn't nice. No, sir. Well, keep smiling. <laughs> yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hi, I... How are you? Very well, thank you, sir. Would you, um, like your smoking jacket, sir? Uh, oh, no, thanks. Uh, I kicked that habit years ago. Got tired of scrounging around for the butt, you know? <laughs> beg your pardon, sir. No, you shouldn't have to beg. How long have you been working here? Twenty years, sir. Mm-hmm. Guess you need a raise, too, huh? What's your name? My name? Parks, sir. OK, you got it. Keep smiling. Jonathan, I can't get over this place. Oh. Well, it sure beats a park bench, don't it? Oh, hi, how you doing? Well, you're speaking to me. Yeah, you work here, too? That is one of the most insulting things you've ever said to me. The rich's wife. Oh, gee, I wish you'd said something before. Said something before? I've tried to say things to you. I gave up years ago. Listen, lady, I'm sorry. Listen, lady. You can't even speak to me with more warmth than you'd show a stranger. You better say something. Hey, what am I supposed to say? Nothing. The less said between us, the better. Got to help me with this thing. I'd be only too willing to try to help save this marriage. You're the one who won't try. Look, lady. Will you stop calling me that? Have you been drinking? Her name's Carlotta. Carlotta, you mind if I call you that? No, I haven't been drinking. I don't want to argue with you. Call her Lottie. Lottie? Lottie. 
You haven't called me Lottie in 30 years. Look, uh, the, the, the truth is, uh, we really don't know each other at all. I thought I knew you once, long ago. You, Lottie, you see, you, you think you know me, but really, I'm just a bum. Do you really mean what you're saying? Yeah. See, you think you know me, but you don't, and I don't really know you either. Oh, Melvin. Now I don't know what to say. You don't know how long I've wanted to talk to you like this, how long I've waited to talk to you like this. I've been so lonely in this house. Yeah? Oh, it's a pretty nice house. Oh, yes. You've given me all the material things, but they mean nothing, not really. What I wanted you to give was your love. Oh, oh I, I, I don't think we should be having this conversation. Uh, I mean, we're strangers and all. Oh, but if you can see that, then it's not too late for us. But how could a beautiful lady like you want to have anything to do with a guy like me? Oh, Melvin. Oh, oh hey, uh, whoa. Uh, maybe we should slow down a little. Yes. Yes, let's savor every moment. Oh, Melvin, I never knew you could be so romantic. I'll have Parks light a fire for us. We haven't used the fireplace in years. Are you sure this is right? As long as you don't go too far. Mr. Rich, Mr. Rich, I'm just trying to keep you out of trouble. You saw yourself what happened back there. Keep your hands off me, you idiot. This is my home. Do you think my own staff doesn't know my voice? Oh, wait a minute. You can't go in there. Take your hands off me, you idiot. The person that you drove up here is a bum. All right, let's go. Take your hands off of me, you're fired. All right, I tried to be reasonable. And if you show your face around here again, you'll be spending the night in jail. I think we ought to go, Mr. Rich. Go? Go where? I can't even get my own house. I can't get anywhere looking like this. Oh, I don't know. I think I know a place where you fit right in. Melvin Rich in a suit line. Just think of it. It would be something to see, wouldn't it? I'm sorry, everybody, but we've handed out our meals for the day. With a bunch of cutbacks and all, we just can't feed all of you. You don't know how sorry I am. But this is preposterous. We're hungry. You can't turn hungry people away. How will we eat? Try telling that to Melvin Rich. I'm sorry. Oh, I'd like to have that rich guy here right now. I tear him limb from limb. I tear him to pieces and stuff him in a trash can. My name's Joe. What's yours? Uh, 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 Willie. Willie the waiver. Come on, we gotta find us a place to sleep where they're all taken. It's gonna be cold out here tonight. Sleep out here? Out here? Yeah, out here. Well, look, look at this. Even animals live under better conditions than these. Whose fault is that? Well, these people. I mean, I have to do this, but they don't have some kind of voodoo curse on them. They could get jobs. Oh, really? What kind of a job do you think you could get dressed like that? I mean, you think you could run for mayor? Oh, my lord. The campaign debate. I've got to be on television tomorrow. It's the most important debate of the campaign. Well, you're never going to make it, so don't worry about it. Don't worry. I'll be ruined if I don't show up. Well, you're going to show up, but it's not going to be you. You don't mean. Yes, I do.
Uh, Willie, how do you feel? Nice. Nice and cozy. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah, sure beats standing over a trash can out in the park. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it does. <laughs> Always wanted a family. I guess you get used to being alone. You don't realize what you're missing until you see what other people got, and they just let it go to waste. Oh, Melvin. I always wanted a family, too. But you were the one who said you didn't. Hey. People make mistakes. You've never admitted that before. Oh. I'm so happy with you tonight. Hey, Willie, you got that debate tomorrow. You better get some rest. Why can't it last longer? But it can, darling. Let's lie awake, holding each other all night long. Can't do that, Willie. This is only temporary, you know that, so do I. I can't. I can't do that. Not tonight. I'm sorry. I understand. You have your debate tomorrow. But there'll be other nights, darling. It's like we started all over again. Just remember, tonight, I mean, even though I tried not to, and all the angels in heaven may be against it, I, nothing could keep me from falling in love with you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jonathan Martin. Welcome to the debate between two candidates for mayor of this city, Mr. Frank Sturgis and Mr. J. Melvin Rich. Each candidate will ask three questions of his opponent. Mr. Sturgis has won the toss, so we will begin with him. Mr. Sturgis? Thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask Mr. Rich if he doesn't think it's strange that every highway construction bill he pushed through the city council wound up going to his own company, Tricor Construction. It does sound pretty fishy, doesn't it? What do you think, Jonathan? Oh, I don't, I don't know, Mr. Rich. That's up to you. Tricor bought the votes. Well, there you have it, see? Tricor bought the votes. I don't believe it. Hey, Rich just admitted that his company bought votes on the city council. I think we're going to vomit. I, I am going to vomit. Listen, I, I think I can save everybody a lot of time here. Uh, I've been reading quite a bit about the, the Sturgis fella, and he seems pretty good to me. I mean, he seems like an honest fella, too. Don't you think, Jonathan? I, I must remind you, Mr. Rich, it's your opinion we want here. Oh. In my opinion, uh, this Sturgis fella here is an honest fella who'll make a pretty good mayor, and... That's good enough for me. So I would vote for him if I were you folks. Uh, Jonathan, can I just say one more thing? Uh, I, uh, uh, You're on a roll, Willie. Why stop now? Okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, I just want to say... Body? Uh, are, are you watching? I just want to tell you that last night was the most beautiful night of my life. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Well, uh, that's it. Uh, so, goodbye, folks. Have a nice day. Keep smiling.
I thought you called the police. Just listen to me. The police, sir? Yes. Sir. You call me, sir? Of course, sir. Thank you, I suppose. Where uh, is Mrs. Rich? Uh, she's um, upstairs, sir, waiting for you. In your bedroom, sir. In my bedroom? What's she doing in my bedroom? She's got a bedroom of her own. I believe she's waiting to give you uh, a surprise, sir. She's ordered dinner to be served upstairs. What's wrong with your eye, man? Have you got a tick? Oh, no, sir. <laughs> and you? I'll deal with you later. What in God's name? Melvin! Colada, oh. what are you... Oh. Uh. Colada! Have you gone mad? Yes, mad for you. Galana, I, I don't know what to say. You, you've never behaved like this, not even when we were courting. Because I never realized what a wonderful man I was lucky enough to have. Oh, Melvin, I'm going to make you the happiest man in the world. Besides. That kiss was just returning the one you gave me last night. And you never kissed me like that, either. You kissed that bum. I thought you were worse than a bum. But last night, you proved me wrong. Last night? Last night, what exactly happened to you last night? You happened to me last night. And it made me remember just how much I was in love with you once. And it brought it all back. I am shocked beyond belief. Oh, so was I. And Melvin, you're not going to refuse me tonight like you did last night. Tonight, you're mine. And I won't settle for just one kiss. Just one kiss? That's all there was? Of course. You remember. Maybe the man you were with last night wasn't such a bum after all. A bum? Why, you're the most popular man in the city tonight. Haven't you heard? Heard what? Why, since you made a clean breast of it during the debate, every television station in town has been playing the tape. Why, they're flooded with calls. Your company stock is shot up right through the roof. And the attorney general says, if all monies are returned, You'll get off with just a fine. People love you for what you did today, Melvin. But not half as much as I do. I've seen things in the last 24 hours that I never even knew existed. As if through another man's eyes. So, it's back to being a bum again, huh, Jonathan? You were never a bum, Willie. You forget sometimes how lonely it gets. I mean, you get used to it, and then... You see, there's another way. It's kind of hard to come back to things the way they were. Is this it, Jonathan? 
Is this the way it ends? No, Willie. It's not the end. It's just the beginning. I feel real tired all of a sudden. Why don't you lie down, Willie? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should. Hey. What do you think about that? The tree. <laughs> Look at it, Charlie. It's all full of blossoms. Yeah, you're right, Charlie. They're just like snowflakes, except they don't feel cold. It's nice and warm. We are here today to pay tribute to one who walked quietly amongst us, a man who brought joy and happiness into the lives of many people who didn't even know his last name. <sighs> There's no saying, you should never judge a man until you walk a mile in his moccasins. Well, I walked in the footsteps of this gentle soul for a brief moment. And I can tell you, he could fill the shoes of any man, no matter what his station in life. This park is going to seem forever empty without him. But we won't forget him. Wherever you are, Thank you, Willie. And may flights of angels lead you to heaven. I have it on good authority that that is, in fact, the case. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> 